Welcome everyone, this is the fifth lesson of the Rust Crash Course series. We'll talk about the basic control flow in the Rust programming language. Control flow is the order in which different parts of the program are executed. What is the most basic example of control flow? Let number equal 3 and then we write an if. If number is lesser than 5, print condition was true. Else, print ln condition was false. Cargo run dash q and we have condition is true. If we change these to 6, condition was false. Now pay attention because we start doing something which might be a bit tricky. Let condition equal to true, let number equal if condition else 6. And then we print this. Can we assign the result of an if to this number or not? Cargo run dash q. But this is possible for one single reason. An if in Rust is an expression, so it's evaluated and then basically it returns what is at the end of this block, which is not the case of other programming languages. The nested if expression. We define a number equal to 15 and then if the reminder this is the reminder of the operation is zero we print the number is even otherwise we print the number is odd and in case the number is odd we have another if expression cargo run dash q in this case you see we have this uh, let's say expected 15 is odd 15 is also greater than 10. what if we put 16 here so Okay, yes, of course, 16 is greater than 10, but uh, the problem here is how we wrote this code. We nest this if inside the else. In case the number is even, we don't execute this code. If we want to have these two separate statements, in this case, we have the two ifs not nested. In this case, we have two return statements. And and or operators in the if condition. Let's define, for example, three variables, a, b, and c, 10, 5, and 20. We can use the end operator. So, for example, here, you see this double ampersand here stands for end. We can use end to check if a is greater than b and b is greater than c. In case both of them are uh, valid, we'll execute this code. Of course, in this code, we'll just have a print statement. Else, we print the condition and and is not met. Cargo run dash q. In this case, uh, we have a condition with double and is not met. a is greater than b, b is not greater than 20. You can use this or to check if a is greater than b, or b is greater than c. So we have this uh, double pipe, or this is basically an or operator. In this case, if at least one of the conditions is met, we print, for example, this statement. In this case, we have uh, this condition and is not uh, met, and at least one condition is met. Match is uh, probably my favorite. Let's see this in action. It's a sort of switch, I would say, to use it, for example, we can use, uh, before using the match statement, an enum. An enum is a type where when we can define a fixed set of values. If you want, you can check the previous video about data types and enums. We define some uh, possible values for a coin. For example, we have penny, nickel, dime, and quarter. And then we can have this function here. This function is called value in sense. And then we have, you see this match statement, and we have a match on a coin variable, which has to be of the type coin, capital C, and basically it translates the enum value in a number in cents. So a pen is one, a nickel is five cents, a dime is 10 cents, a quarter is 25 cents. Then we can define a coin. So for example, we can assign the value penny to the coin, and then we can print the value, okay? Cargo run dash q, we have a warning, three warnings, because we are not using the variants nickel, dime, and quarter, but you can see here value of coin one. Let's say that I forget to implement what should happen in case of a dime. So I remove the line 14 here on my code. Let's type cargo run dash q, and we have a non-exhaustive patterns. I love this coin, dime, not covered. This is great because for as a developer experience, if we forget 
to make an implementation, we get a problem. Let's talk about uh, loops. In Rust, we have a loop called the loop, <laughs> which is basically an infinite loop. The code inside here will be executed an infinite amount of times. Cargo run dash Q. Okay. <laughs> Let's stop it. <laughs> This is the infinite loop. I stopped it with using Ctrl C. Be careful if you are trying this at home. Let's try our return values from loops. Let counter equal zero. And then we do let result equal loop. A loop is an expression. And then we increase the counter. We can't do plus plus, but we can do plus equal one. If the counter is equal to 10, we double it with the breaks keyword. The break keyword is basically to exit a loop, also a while. And here we print the result. What do you think will be the output of this code? Cargo run dash Q. Error. Cannot assign twice to a mutable variable counter. The compiler is telling us A. You assign to counter here on the line two. You see, let counter equal zero. Cannot assign twice to a mutable variable. Help. Consider making this binding mutable. Mute counter. Let's add the mute keyword on this variable. And let's try to execute this again. And now we have the result is 20. If you are confused, again, check the variables video. Now let's try something else. Let this time I'll create a mutable. One, let's create a counter again, counter equal three. We can define a while loop. A while is basically a conditional loop. It's a loop with a condition. In this case, the condition is here, really close to the while keyword counter. While counter is different to zero, print ln counter, then we can decrease the counter. And also I want to do something that I did in the first lesson, which is to wait for one second. If std threads sleep std time duration from sex one. And after this, we can do a print ln lift off. Let's try this piece of code, cargo run dash q, and then three, two, one, lift off. There are not common four statements in Rust. Maybe you are used uh, on four statements from other programming languages. We don't have them in Rust. Let's say that we have this. Let a equal this. Then we can type this for element in a dot iter, and then we can print it. Here I just want to point out that we are using this syntax with a for keyword and in keyword. Cargo run dash Q, and we have this. The value is 1, the value is 2, 3, 4, and 5 for element in a dot iter. We can also do something like this let s, which starts for string, in quotation marks, hello world. And then we can type for c in s dot charts. This is a method for strings. And then we can print ln the values of the characters that create a string. Cargo run dash q, we can have, you see, we still have the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but we have this, the value is a hello world here. Something very interesting is this. We can use a range, for example, for number in 1 dot dot four, we can print the value. This is very similar to Python. I want to print ln go, like this. Let's try to run this again. Value one, two, three, four, five, the hello world, and then one, two, three, go. We are not printing the four, so we have only one, two, and three. I want to show you something which sometimes is in the interview questions, which is the feeds buds problem. The task is to print the numbers from 1 to 100, but for multiples of 3, you print feeds instead of the number. And for the multiples of 5, you print buds instead of the number. For the numbers, which are multiples of both 3 and 5, you print feeds buds. If you want to try to implement this by yourself, post the video and then check the result. Okay. 
So this is the this is the result. Let's write read, read it together. For number in one dot dot equal one hundred, this is to include the last uh, the number in the range, or you can also do one hundred one. If number reminder three is equal to zero and the number reminder five is equal to zero, we print an n fits buzz. Otherwise, if the number reminder three is zero, we print fits. Otherwise, we print buzz. Otherwise, we print the number. Let's try. Okay. The last one should be buds. Recap. We saw a basic if else example, the simplest example ever. We can use the if in an assignment of a let variable. In some other languages, you can't do that. You can have nested if expressions so with an if inside another if. You can use and, comma, or operators like we did here. Match statement with an enum. And then we used, you see, the match here to check all the possible paths here. So in case we have penny, nickel, diamond, quarter, and we want to return the value in cents. We have a loop called loop, which is basically an infinite loop. It's similar to while true. If you don't want an infinite loop, I comment this out of course we can use the break keyword it's also a, a continue keyword but the continue keyword make you restart the the loop and then we have a while loop with a condition here in this case we have this condition with a counter which is decreased and then we wait one second and we print it out for loop we don't have the classic for but we have a for x in something for array so we have for element in a dot iter for strings we have for c which is for character in s here the string we call it s dot charts so the characters of the string and for number in one dot dot four for example in this case we do this reversed or three to one lift off feeds but game for all the numbers from 1 to 100, included in 100, if the number is multiple of 3, we print feeds. If a number is the multiple of buds, we print 5. If the number is a multiple of 3 and 5, we print feeds buds. Otherwise, we print the simple number. And we can see here the output, which starts from 1. And the last four results are 97, 98, feeds and buds.